the sort of moral panic is just the sort of reason I hate talking to you people. That's right, you people. I am a pejorative rock star, and here you are talking down to me as if my game is the cause of your little dykes and their problems. Maybe if you all were better parents and teachers of the little larvae, we wouldn't be having this conversation for the last time. Any problems your kids had with wilderness are their fault, not mine. But the head of PR over at Marginal, that's our company for those who just came here to get angry and lob accusations, told me I'd better come over here personally and take care of damage control. So that's what I'm going to do. I guess you can consider this a question and answer session. I'm sure by the time we're done, you'll all be leaving happier and healthier, and we won't have to have this conversation again. <clears throat> First off, Lizzie, you, you mind turning on the projector? The one that was supposed to be one when I got here? This is wilderness. As you can see, the title screen, which is what you're looking at, isn't the warm and inviting pastel barf of your Super Mario, so yeah. Pac-Mans. We use a lot of colors to convey the feeling and splendor of nature. You know the same splendor that your kids will be seeing in wilderness instead of going outside to view themselves. And if they happen to be outdoorsy little snots right now, they won't be by the end. You see, wilderness is designed around the Amiga and DOS. Though we did build a Mac-compatible version after demand increased, your goal is to survive in the wilderness, simple enough. A lot of pundits accused us of trying to bandwagon off of the success of other public edu games, similar to how many publishers are bandwagging on off of Myst. Thing is, wilderness is entirely its own beast. We don't have an end goal, or really any goal. The idea is to survive for as long as possible. <clears throat> and eventually die. Now, I can hear some of you murmuring back there, but I went into game design because I felt the world had become too soft, too malleable. When I was a kid, discipline was something to expect, not expect the absence of it. This is the 90s, people. We're here with the edgiest, most realistic games imaginable to help your little children and maybe even you yourselves wake up out of your comfortable stupor you've been building around yourself for the last half a century. Okay, first round of questions. You there, Bolotai. Yes, I did used to work with id, but I can't say we parted on the best of terms. They wanted to focus on their dungeon crawling property. Something they're working out with Raven. I don't know the details. I, <clears throat> we at Marginal, wanted to focus on games with consequences. Uh, actually, since we're talking all honest-like here, I hate the term video game. What I want to create are consequence simulators. My experiences at it did give me an appreciation with tight level design, though. And when we move on to the demoing phase, I'm thinking all of you who've played games before will appreciate the smooth transitions wilderness has to offer. Laughter directed at the audience. No, I'm not expecting you to play a full game here. Trust me, I, I, I want to get out of this room even more than you do. That's actually a pretty good question uh, to lead into the next segment and get you some of the answers you're looking for. We were plagued with a lot of production problems during the development of Wilderness, and I won't pretend otherwise. Uh, a lot of the complaints you've got here have been from the full motion video portions of the game, and, and I'll address those in due time. You wouldn't believe some of the pejorative we had to put up with. Laughter. On Game Start, you create your avatar, your in-game persona. We wanted it to be so that kids would first try to create themselves. There are a lot of occupations, a lot of backgrounds. But just between you and me, none of them matter. Just like none of your backgrounds matter. In the end, we put them in to create a sense of attachment between the players and their characters. Since we couldn't really customize the look of the player too much. We rely on this to build a sense of feeling that this isn't just some nameless pejorative. This is you. Immersion. 
you're greeted by our actors, all FMV. We've got about 10, is that right? 10 people the player can choose to bring with them, but they can only bring a total of four people. We were already developing on a strict deadline, so imagine if we had to refilm the same scene for every possible combination of people. Oh, it would have been impossible. You get some food, some clothes, and some tools for survival, and then are told to explore. Now, one criticism we've got is that the land and wilderness looks entirely the same. Oh, that's not the case. I can assure there are at least one or two areas that look very, very different. But mostly, we opted to have the land look similar to create a sense of loss and confusion. It's very rare to encounter anything, whether animals or other travelers. Naturally, just moving uses the in-game food statistic. Over time, we wanted to have our actors grow more emaciated, more desperate looking. It's pretty rough convincing them to method act, if you will. Laughter. Group joins in. Still, I think you can see the results. Hmm. At first, the mood of the group is optimistic. You've got no destination, no plan. We have food, tools, friends, and things start going sour. We've got in-game relationship counters between members of the group. Little things like who ate the most food last rest period, who scored the big kill while hunting, what religion or ethnicity the character is. Don't look so shocked. These things make people fearful, hateful, envious. In our world, they make people kill. Pretending otherwise is a sort of compromise on quality we at Marginal would never take. You get only the most visceral, the most real for Marginal games. Remember that. Because your group does. My favorite part of the game is how you'll start to see your little group fragment in the camping scenes. Two people on the right, three on the left. Suddenly everyone is off by themselves, haggard, without food. You haven't seen an animal for days. You're hungry starving and you've run out of food you really don't like say the guy immediately to your right bolo tie so what do you do right of course we had a lot of historical inspiration for some of the actions the player can choose to take so i don't want any criticism from any of you speaking honestly again you, you don't know what you're talking about what you're a pejorative pejorative history teacher I don't give a pejorative because you don't know what it was really like, what it is really like. So if you'll kindly just shut up until the presentation is over. Yeah, that's better. Nervous glances towards the clock, shuffling from the audience. Right, right. Where was I? Uh, hmm, yeah. Problems. We had a lot. I, I do mean a lot of problems with this game. Accents on the set, for example. This one turned out to be a blessing in disguise, actually. Jed, one of our FMV crew, uh, actually lost his arm in a filming accident. We got the footage and digitized the lost arm as a possible accident consequence scenario. Actually, that lost arm turns up all over the place. And as an in-joke, one of the pranksters in our imagery department placed it in random locations around the map, hidden under other objects. Well, the player will never see it, but they might recognize it subconsciously. Mm. See, we had a lot of trouble making sound effects that fit, but our sound director got this amazing buzzing sound. I have no clue what it's supposed to be. Plays whenever you mouse over the arm or a recently deceased group member. So the players associate it with death, and when they hear it, just randomly around the map, I wonder what they think of. The compression artifacts where the blood splatters were make me laugh every time. Oh, <laughs> we can never get rid of those. <laughs> Jeez, lighten up. We got permission from Jed in the hospital to use the imagery. Got no idea what you're so fed up about. Sure, most of the staff walked off shortly after, claimed they were on strike, claimed they'd been working in... Abominable subhuman conditions created like walking meat. But guess what? We didn't need them anymore. Take a look at the scared, frightened faces in wilderness and you see the real world. Yeah, pejorative, you. If you think we'll just take another lawsuit lying down. That's why I'm here. And if you can't see how pejorative, brilliant my game is, then I'll pejorative rip out your pejorative face, we pejorative clear. 
Jesus. You're practically as ill-formed and doughy as the little pukes you call your children. What was the point? I'll tell you what the point was. We put the player in a position where they can't win, where they have to be brutal, be real to survive. Hyperventilation. Speaker seems agitated and out of breath. Repeatedly scratches throat and neck. I... Look, any any garbage you've been told about that is completely un untrue. Nothing happens after you fail the game, besides being told the details of your death and the actions of your party afterwards. No other levels, no other areas. There was there was a test version of Wilderness we re re released to a few friends and a little joke, I guess. Uh, a little <laughs> some of the cut FMV footage, but there's absolutely no sort of way that it found its way to your educational copies. <sighs> Throat and cheeks are red, breathing heavily as several members stand. They must be lying. What do you mean you've seen proof? Anyway, I'm telling you that there's absolutely no proof. That, that doesn't matter about the content in the brutal survival area because we cut it from the children's copies. And even if we didn't, they need to see it. They need to see it with their eyes open. Eyes darting as commotion increases. <sighs> no, no more questions. I have nothing more to say.